Hello YouTube Pixies, um, here we have um, the um, Vido um, Bluetooth speaker and uh, Ashens did a review on it and I must admit when you buy it brand new uh, it does sound great, a really great bass on there. Um, well, I'm going to do a tear down, uh, it stopped working, um, I suspect that it's probably the battery that's uh, not receiving a charge. I dismantled it before. This is not going to be uh, a, a bigclive.com, big clive style tail tear down because uh, I'm not really familiar with Bluetooth, etc. And it's probably got a digital amplifier in it. So the way I've been, I've opened it before, but I'll just go through the whole process so we can see what's inside. Okay. So the first thing to do is to remove this. Uh, Gauls. I mean the thing does look very nice. It's a lovely looking thing, really retro. They may come in black as well, which is nice. And the, we've got four screws here. They're normal crosshead style screws and they're not like silly don't let you in there type screws, the sort of thing you get with power, you know, like they're not security screws as such. So there are six screws altogether. These pegs here are purely decorative. You can actually leave them on when you're dismantling or trying to repair this thing. Different screwdriver. Um, one thing that occurred to me, because I do like this thing, um, is possibly change the battery, um, perhaps for a nickel metal high drive, 3.6 volts, that would be three cells altogether. Now the screws aren't actually magnetic, they just happen to be a perfect fit for this screwdriver. And incidentally, this is not a stereo um, Bluetooth speaker, it's a mono Bluetooth speaker. What they do is they combine the left and right channels to turn it into a mono. But for eight quid, it's still damn good value. Um, it's supposed to have a radio in there. And I have made, got it to make a noise, but you'd have to live in a very, very high signal strength area in order to get the radio working if at all and the radio is not actually mentioned um, in the um, book that comes with it just looking for a screw that might have got lost anyway that there is a passive base radiator um, now this this is this here is a, uh, an airtight compartment. The speaker obviously is pushing in and out the air all the time when it's running. And as far as I can work out, a passive base radiator lowers the resonance. like to poke the screw out using a bit of solder because otherwise I like to know that I've got six of the screws that, that are intending to be used to put the thing back together. That's the last screw. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six screws. This is the, the battery and it's one of those, Big Clive mentions it, I suppose that's got some sort of a over, overload circuitry, maybe a microprocessor inside. In the actual printed circuit, it comes out like this, and Big Clive's got enough money that he could <laughs> he could buy one of these and do a teardown and and tell us what all these bits on the printed circuit board do, do because I haven't got a clue. This is all uh, what they call voodoo, as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, that's a. I think it's obviously a. I would imagine it's a um, lithium-ion battery. 
3.6 volts. So um, that's the on off switch obviously just there. That is another um, USB connection I think. Um, that's the larger USB connection. There's a possibility they might actually be in parallel, wired in parallel. And that is for a um, memory card. Uh, you've got the speaker. Imagine it's 4 ohms. It does say 4 on there. Does it? Well, there's a, there's a lump of something on it, so you can't tell what the resistance impedance is. I suppose I could measure it but it's not worth it and there's a there's a flashing LED charge um, indicator on there somewhere um, That's a little aerial. I, might, I would imagine that's probably the Bluetooth receiver. That looks like um, a ceramic resonator, possibly. I don't know. I don't know what it is. So, just thought I would show that. Um, rather than go at it with a Dremel, which is not a very good idea, but uh, a battery, I think if it's a 3.6 volts, assuming it is, there's nothing, oh, 2.96 volts, so what I could do, I guess, is buy uh, a couple, three, um, I think, uh, AAAs probably fit in there, in series, which will give you 3.6 volts, and then, um, Perhaps a couple of silicon diodes to drop the voltage. I suppose it would work. If it's 2.96, it probably wouldn't hurt to run it on three. So let's uh, put it back together. Oh, I should mention these are from Poundland and they cost eight quid. But I don't think they're intended to last very long when you buy them. I would imagine the reason why it failed is not because of the battery as such, but it's probably the charging circuit because lithium ion batteries are a pain to charge. There is some information about charging them, recharging them on um, an EV blog, Dave Jones. Um, but there's a chip you can buy. And apparently you connect one end of the one output from the chip to um, well the input to the chip to your power supply whatever that is uh, the other end obviously feeds the battery and there's a peculiar arrangement where you've got to feed quite a lot of current into the battery initially and then it drops off but uh, I've tried the charging lithium-ion batteries using a stabilized supply never had any success with it but in all respects 
this eight quid pound land um, speaker. It's a throwaway item really. You buy it, it fails after about a month, you throw it in the bin and it ends up in landfill. And then you've got the pollution aspect because all the all the stuff that's in it to make it work in the first place that will all dissipate into the environment but nobody really cares do they let's face it nobody really cares close fit thank you for watching